Hey everybody, it's where I can do it. Um, in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to get Duino coin installed on your Node MCU or your ESP8266. Let's go ahead and dig in. So the ESP8266 is not a very powerful device, but it's still uh, a great device to use for Duino coin mining. Um, it's one of the ones I have code written for, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So one of the first things we do first is we need to download the latest Arduino IDE um, for your system. Let's go ahead and get the, our browser open. Okay, so, and I will put all the links for all these different sites and everything in a Google Doc and the video description down below for you guys to be able to download and follow along. So one of the first things you do is go to arduino.cc forward slash en forward slash software. And this will bring you to the downloads page for the Arduino IDE. Um, so all you got to do is just download um, the Windows if you're on Windows, or um, you can also do it on Linux and on Mac OS. Um, so go ahead and get that download for whatever is appropriate for your system. Um, after you get that downloaded, before you install it, we're going to go to the GitHub repository, repository for Duino Coin. Um, and then once you get onto the Get up page. All you gotta do is just go to code and click download zip. And then that will go ahead and that will download the latest and greatest uh, code directly from the GitHub that we will then be able to use to install. So once that's done, now one thing you need to be aware of is with the Node MCU or ESP8266 is you need to know what the USB driver is. I ran into a couple different issues trying to figure this out when I started. Um, and I determined that my chipset on my particular Node MCU is a Silicon Labs CP2102 chipset. Um, and I also found there are um, some other ones that use the WCH CH340 and CH341 chipset. So I'm going to go ahead and put both of these links available in uh, like I said, the Google Doc. Um, so hopefully this fits um, your board. Um, if you, Like I said, if you know what your... USB, um, you know, interface chipset is. So this is the Silicon Labs link, and that's it. silabs.com forward slash developers forward slash USB hyphen to hyphen UART hyphen bridge hyphen VCP hyphen drivers. That will bring you to this page where you can then go to the downloads tab and then download the latest version uh, for Windows or for uh, Mac. And then as far as the other drivers, the WCH340-341, that is going to be found at wch-ic.com forward slash downloads forward slash ch341 ser underscore zip dot html. And this will take you to a page where you can download the USB to serial port driver for Windows, Linux, and Mac. So that will be available there. So I'm going to go ahead and download, like I said, the Arduino software, download the GitHub repository, and then I download the proper driver for my device. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get Arduino installed. So we go to our, our download folder. And here's the Arduino that I downloaded. So go ahead and double click on that. Hit next for everything. I'll change my default directory to my D drive. That's why I like to install everything. Go click install. Just a couple seconds here to install. It's a pretty quick little install. Okay, installation is complete. Next up, what you're going to want to do is you want to get those drivers installed onto your system. So what you want to do is you want to um, find a driver. You want to the zip file that you download from either one of those two sites. Right click on it. Go to extract all. And then it's going to open up into a folder. Like this. And then um, obviously I had an x64 system. So I just double clicked on that application there and went ahead and installed my drivers already. So after we got the drivers installed. Now we're going to go ahead and get ready and let's start Arduino IDE and make sure it can recognize our device. So first thing we need to do is close up our browser here. Go to our Arduino IDE. Let's 
gonna go ahead and load that up. Now, when the application first opens, I'll go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. There we go. So, um, when it first opens, it's um, if you look underneath tools and you go to board, normally this ESP8266 boards file is not here. Let me show you how to add this because when you first load it up, you're going to have this Arduino AVR boards listed and that's it. Like, great, how do I get to these other, how do I install this so yours looks like this? So it's very easy. All you need to do is you go up to file, go to preferences. What you want to do is you want to paste in this link. I will go ahead and put it in the, it said Google Doc. And basically this will allow you to install additional boards on your site. So go ahead and do that. And then click OK. So what you want to do is you want to go up to Tools. You want to go underneath Board and go to Boards Manager. From there, we want to type in the ESP. And from there, you're going to now see this thing that's going to say ESP8266. And it'll give you an option to install. So go ahead and click Install and click Close. And then make sure you go back up to tools again and then go to board and then for underneath the esp8266 you can select either if you have a, a esp12 enhanced board for a node mcu or a regular modular or any other you know chip that you might be working with whether it be a, a wemos d1 um any of those kind of chips are all listed here um, if you do not find your particular chip um that's just a quick google search and figure out how to add in your particular board and chip um, onto Arduino if you're unable to find it. But this works for the, the basic Node MCU and also the ESP8266 modulars you can find on Amazon, eBay, etc., including the, the Wemos D1. So, like I said, go ahead and select your particular chip. So, mine is the Node MCU ESP12E. Gonna go ahead and select that. All right, now since I have that all selected, now. We need to open the Duino Coin Master Zip that we downloaded from Git. So let's go to our download folder here. Let's right click on the Duino Coin Master. We're going to extract all. And if we open up the folder, we're going to go into the ESP8266 code. And you can see there's this Arduino file right here. So in order to get this open, we need to go ahead and just open it. So we're going to double click on it. There we go. So we're going ahead and got this uh, loaded up. So now what we need to do is you put in your Wi-Fi SSD, your Wi-Fi pass, your Duco, du sorry, your Duco username, and then your rig identifier. So what I like to do is I like to make it like, you know, this is ESP8266 device one, device two, device three, depending on how many devices you have. I'm currently running three. Um, but you can adjust this um, and, and change it to the name, whatever you want. It just helps me keep track a little bit better. So like I said, go ahead and put in your SSD, your Wi-Fi pass, your Ducko username, and your rig identifier. If you want to have one, you don't have to. It's optional, but I definitely recommend doing that. So um, go ahead and fill in all your information. Once you get everything all filled in, go to File and then Save. So that way the changes that you made to the Wi-Fi and all that are saved and then all you need to do is click the upload button right here it's this little arrow to the right go ahead and click on that and it will go ahead and upload it uh, directly to uh, the node MCU so let's go ahead and I'm going to fill this information in real quick and then we'll go ahead and push that to the node MCU so there's one important quick tip I forgot to give you guys and that is making sure that your ESP8266 board settings is set to the right cpu frequency so when i first installed this my cpu thing was set to 80 megahertz and that's it it did not um it only provided a you know 4500 hash rate so in order to get it to the 9000 hash rate you see in my video make sure that before you um, upload that you check your cpu frequency and change it to the 160 hertz so if you go in here change it 160 and then click your upload then you'll be all set and good to go 
So once you have your SSID, password, your username, and identifier, um, go ahead, like I said, to do up to save. Um, and then go ahead and connect your ESP8266 device to your computer. Um, now, one tip I can give uh, for you to check is that you need to make sure you're using a data USB cable and not a um, power USB cable. I found that out about two hours later after I couldn't figure out how to get it to work. And that was because I was not using a, a data USB cable. So once you get the, um, it connected, you hear a little Windows chime. If you're on Windows, let you know the USB device is connected. And then in order to write the file onto the computer, you go ahead and click this little upload button here and the uh, right there, a little arrow to the right. It's going to compile the sketch. And then in just a second, it'll start sending the data over to the ESP device. Okay, and it's going to go ahead and reboot the device. Now it's like, okay, great. Now it uploaded. How do I know it's even working? How do I do that? So all you need to do is go over here to Tools and go to Serial Monitor. Make sure your baud rate is set to um, 115,200 baud. And you can see right here, there's the hash rate I'm getting. And there's a new job. And then, good. It's just going through, hashing away. So you can see it's totally working there's no issues um you'll also get the led on the esp device will also uh, blink every single time it gets a new job so you'll kind of see that in my little corner of the screen here the video that it blinks every single time a new job complete so it's really cool to be able to see that let you know everything's working um but yeah that's it it's super easy to install i know it's like a lot of steps but it's not too bad once you uh once you do it once or twice so, um, yeah, like I said, I'll put everything into a Google Doc for you guys to be able to download all the links and everything you'll need to go ahead and get this started on your own. So, um, yeah, let me know if anybody has any questions or comments about this. And remember, if Ry can do it, so can you.